And we are live! Welcome back, everybody! Hello, Rikush. Hello, Benjamin. Hello, Trumpet. Hello, Luke. How's everyone doing this evening? Have a good weekend? <sighs> I've been Chaos Incarnate all day. And now it's time to have my brain all organized so that I can solve puzzles. Benjamin says I'm doing hungry. You need a snacks. Aww. I'd send you a snacks through the screen if I could. Kush says I just finished my losing streak in LOL. And it's almost time for bed. Oh, League of Legend. Okay. I'm not quite in the loop. <laughs> Benjamin says your shirt has inspired me to make noodles. I do love to be a source of inspiration. keep causing myself more like chaos and stuff. Noodle inspiration is one of the best kinds. Absolutely. Alright. We are playing. Danger by design. Luke says we had Cubans for dinner, very tasty. Which, I'm the one who made them, and I initially read that as we had cubes for dinner. And it's like, dude. We did not have cubes for dinner. Why would you tell people that? They think I'm feeding you cubes. <laughs> okay. Uh, so a Cuban is a sandwich. Ours were the laziest version possible, but it's usually, like, grilled. Hey, Roy, we're discussing Cuban sandwiches. So it's got pulled pork, ham, pickles, Swiss, and mustard. We strayed very far from the original, but we're still calling it Cubans because that's what we started with. <clears throat> yes, talking about a sandwich, not a person. No, we had Cubans for dinner. They just moved over down the moved in down the street. It was nice to get to know them. Yeah. It's one of my favorite sandwiches. I'm a big fan. Alright. So. Trumpet says, and this is why English is a difficult language. There are many reasons that English is a difficult language. Oh my gosh, Roy. Yeah. Like, at least with the Italian sub, they added sub. So, you're not just saying, I had an Italian. Cubans, for whatever reason, is just a Cuban. It's not a Cuban sandwich. It's just a Cuban. All right. Are we ready? I need to clean off my desk. Add it to the to-do list. And in we go. 
Hi, I'm Nancy Drew. <gasps> oh. Since you can tell a lot about a person by where he or she lives, I thought I'd introduce myself by showing you my room. As you can see, I keep it pretty neat. Of course, I don't spend that much time in here. I always seem to be off solving mysteries. Anyway, here's my center of operations, my desk. Go ahead and poke around. If you want to know the particulars of how I do what I do, take a look at the book titled How to Be a Detective. It's real helpful, especially if you're new to the mystery solving business. And be sure to check out my scrapbook. I put memorabilia from all my past cases in there. A lot of them were pretty dangerous and at times really scary. But don't say anything about that to my dad, okay? He worries about me enough as it is. And whatever you do, read what's in the file called Case File. That will tell you all about the mystery I'm about to try to solve. If you think you're ready to dive into that mystery, just click on the plane ticket and you'll be on your way. I forgot that this was the first one with Nancy's bedroom. I love that glimpse that we get of it as she comes up the stairs. Trumpet says, do I remember you saying Nancy's supposed to be 19? Yes. So, of course, she thinks her dad worries about her enough. Trumpet asks, is she perpetually 19 like Bart Simpson is perpetually 10? As far as I can tell, yes. Like, she's 19 and, I don't know, in a gap year or something. Also, can I just say, I really appreciate with this desk... Uh, over here, she has like a replica of one of the figures from the from Beach Hill Museum in Secret of the Scarlet Hand. She has one of the horses from the Haunted Carousel. I think, yeah, that's the one that she rides all the time. And over here, this was one of the items that was for sale in Whale World, in Danger on Deception Island. Trumpet says she's had quite the year. Luke says she solved like 500 cases in the same year. Rest of life, totally uneventful. Oh, is she one of those that peaked at 19? Maybe when she grew up, she became a supervillain. Oh, she grew up to be a Scooby-Doo bad guy. That would make sense. She's met so many of them, she would know all of the mistakes they made. Or she could be like a kind of a puzzle bounty hunter. Alright, cover assignment. Travel to Paris and work as an assistant to Minette an up-and-coming American fashion designer whose behavior has lately become alarmingly bizarre and erratic. She's been firing people right and left, throwing temper tantrums, refusing to return phone calls. I mean, so far this sounds like a fairly normal fashion designer, right? Running dangerously behind schedule, again, she's a creative, and wearing a full face mask all day, every day, even while working. All right, that one's a little concerning. real assignment. <clears throat> Discover the reason for Minette's strange behavior and report back to Amy Grunhild, a client of Dad's and Minette's biggest financial backer, who wants to know, is Minette cracking under the pressure of trying to make her spring collection even more spectacular than her fall collection was? Will she have enough designs done for there to even be a spring collection? Is she up to something Ms. Grunhild doesn't know about? Was investing in Minette a mistake? Is it time to pull the financial plug on her? Additional info, Minette has one other assistant, an American named Heather, with whom I will be working. Her studio is in an old windmill, Moulin in French, in a section of Paris called Montmartre. Montmartre? Montmartre. I've been doing French on Duolingo, and it's Hey, Sapphire. Welcome, welcome. How you doing? Sapphire says, I shared you. Oh, thank you. I appreciate. 
Oh, she designs clothes primarily for plus size women. I took two years of French in school, so I should be able to get by. You keep telling yourself that, Nancy. Uh oh. Where did you share? Now I'm scared. Dad made me promise not to go anywhere in Paris at night by myself. Smart man. <clears throat> They're okay, it's just a lot. What kind of a lot, girl? No matter what, I cannot let Minette find out that I'm there to check up on her. According to Ms. Grunhild, she could really lose it then. Hi. Oh! Hello! Hi. Oh! My goodness! All right, I'll 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 give that a minute and then read off the names. People. Okay. Hi. And we have a map of Paris Metro. And Nancy's scrapbook, which is fun. All right. Thank you for the follows. Carlia. Oh, dear. Paraiba, Luna, Enchanting, Moonlit. These are really cool names. Welcome in. Hi. Oh. Spork. <laughs> Hi, Spork. Thank you for the follow. Oh my goodness. Oh wow. Well. She has one page. I think she gets up to like three. Sapphire says this is why I warned beforehand. I very much appreciate that. Thank you. How are y'all doing this evening? We are just starting Nancy Drew Danger by Design. So we are on our way to Paris undercover as an assistant to a fashion designer who might have gone off the deep end. We're supposed to be finding out what's really happening with her without her figuring it out. And oh my goodness. I fixed. Thank you for the follow. Yes, we'll be making tea. I always get it wrong at least once, so I'm nervous. And we are absolutely doing Junior Detective because like, it doesn't matter how long I've been playing these, Senior still sounds scary. Well, that would be a long flight. Preparation for our landing. Please make sure your seatbelt is securely fastened. Thank you. I'm good with Taxi! about a I'm good with about a four hour flight. Yeah, junior detective, you can get more help from your friends, and that's part of the fun. Hello? Ah! Ah! I said don't come near me. No, Minette, don't! Duck! <gasps> Stay back, you hear me? Stay back! Bonjour, vous êtes... I mean, are you Nancy? Uh, yeah? I'm Heather McKay. Welcome! I'm so glad you're here. How was your flight? Uh, fine. Well, actually, they lost my suitcase, so I don't have any clothes or my cell phone. What's going on in there? Is someone hurt? That's just Minette throwing one of her tantrums. Don't worry. She'll stop screaming right now. They lost your suitcase? That's terrible! Well, at least you're staying with Jing Jing. She'll have tons of clothes you can borrow. I've gone to some people's houses like that. You know, you, you go over to like, visit a friend, ever, their, their mom lets you in, and you just hear screaming, you're like, oh, ignore that. Happens all the time. Okay. Thank you. Everyone's sitting there, chatting, trying to pretend everything is normal. 
Ja. Ja. Yeah? Friends, what are those? Uh, I'm assuming like the people that you brought into my stream today. And I feel like uh, at the age where I mostly had stuff like that happen, sometimes mine was the house where it was happening. And, you know, no judgment. But um, it was usually like the friends were the kids of my mom's friends, because that's how you make friends. Boomer says that sounds like me when I consider my life just uncontrollable sobbing. Also, welcome in, Boomer. How are you tonight? Sapphire says, I want to help you get closer to 100. Thank you so much. I'm very close and I really appreciate it. Now I definitely have to figure out what I'm doing for the like 100 follower stream. Is she all right? <laughs> oh, you mean Manette? No. Don't worry, she's fine. No. At least she will be after phase three, which should begin right about now. <laughs> See, she uses this process that some shrink taught her to manage anger and frustration. First, she vents her rage for ten seconds, then six seconds of sobs and tears, and finally, at least four seconds of robust laughter. All of which restores her positive flux. Huh? It's all very weird, but it works, and believe me, without it, she would be impossible to work <coughs> for. With it, she's a mere nightmare to work for. Anyway, ready to get started? Not the therapy I would have recommended for her. Just... Just saying. Luke says, I never start my day without four seconds of robust laughter. If you start doing that, I'm like, mm -mm, no, I'm out. You can do that by yourself. Gosh, can you say mood swings? Oh, yeah. Tuffer says, why see an actual therapist when you can just see who Minette goes to? Yeah, it seems to be working really well for her. You bet. That desk over there will be your workstation. I made a list of all the things that need to get done and put them on your computer. That's a Metro Pass. It'll let you ride the subway all over the city for free. Go ahead and take it. Answering the phone is your job. If you have any questions, just ask. Ask me, that is. Do not bother Manette. She's behind on her spring collection and is in danger of falling way behind on her couture projects. Like... I cannot for the life of me remember what it's called. I should know. I've known it. I've mentioned it before. Not on stream, but there is specifically a therapy that is for the management of excessive emotion. For like, you know, when you feel like you've gone all the way to 11, dialing it back down to like at least a 7, something that a human being can deal with. And I feel like that might be more helpful for her than... Scream, cry, laugh hysterically for 20 seconds total for the whole process, and then go back to work. Mm. Boomer says, I failed primal scream therapy due to insufficient lung capacity. Boomer <laughs> says, Valium? I mean, maybe that's how Heather is so calm. Roy says she needs a positive outlet for her emotions, like going to the gym, or taking a walk, or yelling at a statue. Yes. Couture projects? High fashion dresses and accessories that people have commissioned Manette to create. Needless to say, those people are très riche. In fact, she's designing the dress the First Lady will wear to the World Summit in November. Pretty cool, huh? Heather? Yes? I hear voices. Who are you talking to out there? I hear Nancy voices. Nancy Drew, you know, from the States? Nothing new for her. Well, good to me out there. Send her in. Yes, Manette. As soon as you feel up to it, she's right through that door. Yeah, something tells me this isn't the first time she's heard voices. How come Manette has fallen so far behind in her work? She's been under a lot of stress lately. Talk to you later. Whenever you have questions, just ask. Ooh. 
Ooh. Okay, I like this little... Like the little bamboo fountain shoji screen kind of deal. That's cute. Better living through chemicals. Also, the bright blue front door is so fun. Her... Wait. High heels for your poodle. Um... So, in Minette's waiting area, she has magazines talking up her rival? Who named his pit bull after her? Don't put high heels on your dogs. Words to live by. Oh, she's cute. Hmm. Oh, that's kind of fun. Okay. <gasps> Roy says, I have a good imagination, but I couldn't imagine a poodle wearing high heels. Benjamin, next time you're bored and need AI inspiration? Okay, so there's a lot of, like, interesting sort of Asian influences. Leave that alone, okay? Fine, you don't want me snooping through absolutely everything? Gosh. Buzzkill. Okay. Okay. Yes, I'm looking around getting ideas for House Flipper. Let's see. Uh, these doodles sure look familiar. Which is more blinding, Jean's head or his medallion? It's like Sinclair's tie all over again. Sunny June was here! With his Coco Kringles! Oh my gosh, Minet. Okay. I finally know. Ooh, Uwe Carol. Where is Carol? Au revoir, Carol. Bon voyage. Okay. Go dodo, go dodo, do the dodo doodad that you dodos do. All right. Roy says you found a picture of a poodle wearing Prada high heels. All right, into the Discord we go. This sounds like a necessity. Okay. All right, I'm glad nobody did it to an actual dog. Someone's probably tried. Okay. Sunny was here. Sunny June. That's why those doodles look familiar. Sunny June did them. He must have been Minette's last assistant. Wow, that guy gets around. Oh, man. Pick up envelope from JJ Ling. Pick up fabric photos from Dieter von Schwesterkrank. Deliver photos to John Michel Traquenard. Fix plotter. <laughs> do whatever Minette tells you to do and do it fast. Okay. He is everywhere. We last saw him at Beach Hill in Secret of the Scarlet Hand. 
see. Oh my gosh, they're order of office supplies from Krollmeister, obviously. Drawing tablets, number two pencils, gum erasers, fine tip blue pens, and earplugs. Alright. Okay. Oh my gosh, a letter from... Emily Griffin in prison. Hi. Hello, Starlight. Thank you for the follow. I appreciate it. How are you today? Oh my. No more deliveries from Elmo's Pizza Parlor. Three out of our last four attempts to deliver pizza to your place of business have resulted in screaming tirades. It caused my delivery persons to fear for their lives. As you know, one of them quit on the spot. I realize that Minette is an artist, with little tolerance for interruptions, but such outbursts are uncalled for and are detrimental to my employees' emotional health. Therefore, we will no longer do business with you. I'm sorry if this causes you any inconvenience. My employees, however, are not. Ooh, snap. And people trying to get the scoop. And security checks. Elmo, first one to prioritize employees' and mental health, right? Oh, if only. Right. Thank you, Rikush. Okay, apparently I needed that. Something about the bunny. Alright. What's this? That's the plotter. It's broken. Fixing it is one of your jobs. Mm -hmm. Rikush says, I'm here lurking and snuggling my piggies while chilling with the stream. That sounds like a lovely evening. Snuggling guinea pigs and watching Nancy Drew? This is the one that looked the easiest to remember. I think I got it. Not its clothes. There. Haha! -ha. First try. Nancy, get. Bonjour, Manette's House of Design. Bonjour. My name is Lynn Manrique. I'm with the Modern History Department at UC Kearns in the States, and I'm following up on the letter I sent to Manette about two weeks ago concerning Noisette Tornade. Ooh. History Department? I love history departments. Rikush says, yes, after the chaotic day is exactly what I need. Well, I, I don't know what your day was like, but I'm glad that I can provide a quiet space after. Hi. Oh my goodness. Hello, Celestial. Thank you for the follow. How are you today? Good grief, Sapphire. When you said you were bringing people, you weren't joking. Noisette Tronade? It's that historian person, isn't it? Tell her we're sorry, but Manette is extremely busy and won't be able to get back to her for at least six weeks. I'm sorry, but... I heard. Well, six weeks it is, then. Thank you, anyway. Sapphire says, why have a community if I can't share? There. Bloomer says six weeks minimum longer if you're lucky. For real. Alright. I guess we need to face the beast, huh? Alright. Check. Put that. That's finished. That's finished. Alright. Fine. 
Well, there you are. I was just about to call Amy <coughs> Grunhild and tell her that this internship thing she'd arranged for you was off. It's bad enough Amy foisting you on me like this. The day I become financially independent and can tell people like her to buzz off will be the happiest day of my life. Well, you're here, we've met, so get to work. Heather did give you a list of chores, right? Yes, I'm all set. One more thing. See that form over there? The one I've just started to drape? Don't touch it. Don't even go near it. That's the dress I'm designing for the First Lady. Now go. Actually, make me a pot of my special tea first. Tea time! It was custom blended by my tea therapist, so make sure you follow the directions. When you're done, pour me a cup and leave it on the table. A nice big boost of herbal energy never fails to get my brain cells firing. She has a tea therapist. Again, I feel like she needs a therapist therapist. She has a tea therapist. Maybe that's who told her to scream. Oh, Riku says, let's say I didn't sleep well again. <sighs> I'm sorry. You're not kidding about the full moon. Which means I was so tired and drowsy while loading the dishwasher, I accidentally put a wooden cutting board in, and well, now I have three smaller wooden cutting boards and some splinters in my filter. Oh, I'm sorry. That's awful. That's one of those things where you're like, you just, like, you open it up, you see the consequences, and everything just. <sighs> Oh, that's rough. Yeah, I'm snooping a little bit. Okay. Let's see. To make Minette her tea, the first thing I should do is read these instructions. Then I should put whichever herbs the instructions say I need into this pot of boiling water. Then when I'm done, I should click on the teapot so I can pour the tea into a cup. If I make a mistake and need to throw out an herb that I chose, or the tea itself, all I have to do is click on the sink. Okay, I think I'm ready. Is that how tea is normally made? I don't make tea. But it is tea time, so I'm excited. Alright. <clears throat> After a painstaking analysis of her body type, age, mood swings, no kidding, Eating habits and lifestyle, I have formulated the following blend for Minette and for Minette only. Mm -hmm. Riku says it's not even that big of a deal. I'll clean the filter and buy a new board. It's just I'm so done, I just want to sleep. Yes, when you're tired, things hit harder. Oh, I hope you can get good sleep tonight. Please note, the consequences of anyone but Minette drinking this tea could be catastrophic. Don't try this at home, kids! If the tea is blended correctly, it will have a pleasant taste and an instant soothing effect. If made incorrectly, it will taste foul and have a negative effect on mood. Therefore, the guidelines below must be strictly adhered to. Alright. If Minette has had a temper tantrum in the last 14 days, and if she declares that blue is her favorite color on the day... Excuse me, Minette, but what's your favorite color? Red. Luke says Nancy drinks it anyway, turns into a capybara. Capybara. Right. <laughs> if Minette is relaxed, does that happen? Let's see. She's right-handed today, right? She's not wearing a dress. Okay. I don't feel like doing this now. No, we just need to see if she's right-handed. She was drawing with her right hand, right? Yes. Oof, Boomer says, I know the feeling, running on four hours sleep myself. I've been doing that a lot the last couple weeks. And then yesterday... All of our plans for the day wound up getting cancelled, um, because on Friday I'd met with our pastor and then Sunday he had to call the elders in to cover church because he had COVID. So we cancelled all of our 
outings and company and stuff for the day. So... Um, I spent the entire day playing Baldur's Gate 3. Like, the entire day playing Baldur's Gate 3. And you know what? I actually felt decent when I woke up this morning. I feel so much more rested. So apparently I just needed a good, like, 8 to 10 hour gaming session. Alright. We need all the Gaviform. When asked to pick a number between 1 and 10, if Manette chooses an odd number on the day the tea is to be consumed... Manette, could you please pick a number between 1 and 10? 10. Even. Uh, okay. Gaviform and seven or greater. And marshy herbs. Alright. I'll get at least one wrong, I know it. So, Gaviform, seven plus, and marshy. So... Um, reason? I don't know herbs. I don't know what they're doing here. Molecula. That one's a fun name. Molecula. They might all be made up. I think they're all made up. Boomer <laughs> says, try water food coloring, a bit of orange pico and valium. There you go. Food coloring and valium. That'll get her. Nullery. Right. one has a potency rating of 22. Sapphire says these aren't made up. It's not really used. At least a few of them aren't made up. Okay, because this one says that gibbering mutters when you pet the leaves. And, like, if I can get a muttering plant, oh I want to know about it. Thank you for the follow, Whispering. Hello, how are you doing? Hogbone, yes. Dry habitat. Mac, Mac, Villa. Yes? Yeah, because it's plenty of seven or greater. Uh, uh, good luck. Orange slug. What on earth? Orange slug can cause fascination with bright, shiny objects if consumed in large quantities. Alright. Yerigia. Sweet. Aw, that's a lovely name. Hip sweet. And let's see. Ooh. Our vein. Oh. Hello, Lunar. 
Thank you for the follow. How are you today? And yellow buttons. That's a long list. There's a lot of herbs in her herbal tea. I feel like I've got to have some in there that aren't supposed to be. Should not be consumed by persons of Icelandic descent. Okay. Don't need that one. And Lickilla Nori Jibring 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 Mugbone Macrophila Eurythia Pip Sweet Nervain Like all but four All done I finished making your tea. Just leave it there. Okay. Hope for the best. Nancy, come back here. The tea <laughs> is utterly rude. I can already feel my creativity flowing again, building like a wave on the ocean, surging towards some unseen shore. I have another job for you, a very critical job. See the stuff that I've been studying? That, in essence, is my spring collection. Uh-huh. All those objects have certain things in common which speak to and stimulate the artistic sinews of my subconscious, from which all the designs I need will eventually burst forth. Uh-huh. They're all totally rude, but they're not enough. I need more, Nancy. You need to take the number seven metro to Pont Neuf. Go to the flea market in Square de Vergalant Park and buy me four more things with qualities identical to the ones each of these possesses. Use this bag. Put everything in there as soon as you buy it. I don't want anyone seeing what you bring me. It could give away my whole collection. Roy says, I believe I don't want to see her creative juices burst forth. Here's some money. Mm-hmm. I'm just supposed to go out and buy things? Stuff. I want stuff. New stuff that's just like this old stuff, only different. Now just take a good look at my stuff, then go. Go! Me trying to find new books to read. I want stuff that's just like my old stuff. Only, I want new stuff that's just like my old Rude. stuff, only different. <laughs> no worries, Carlyle. Yeah, welcome everyone. Minette, you've really outdone yourself. Minette the Masked. This is very dramatic. Hmm. Alrighty. Oh, some of Minette's rudest creations started on Carol, her favorite form, seen here awaiting its next draping. Boomer asks, does she add up all her ingredients? In other words, is she a teetotaler? Minette named her favorite dress form Carol. Okay. Yeah. Sure. What happened to your wall? You're not really talking to me while I'm trying to work, are you? <laughs> Sorry. All right, then. Okay. Let's see. So we need to go to Pondu and get that. Hello, Brave! Welcome, welcome! How are you today? And we also need to get an envelope from JJ. Oh, I guess from Peter as well. Hang on, Peter was at Rue de Bac and Boulevard Saint-Germain. Okay. Desmange for JJ. 
Okay. Alright. Oh. Hello. There's something on the floor here. Looks like someone slipped it under the door. Hmm. It's for Manette. Go ahead and open it. Make the most of what little time you have left. Soon it will all be over. Hmm. Oh no, not another one. Manette's gotten other letters like this? Letters, phone calls. They started sometime in April, then they stopped, then they started up again in July. And last month, someone sent Manette dead flowers every day for a week. Oh, nice. She locks the letters up in her dodo box over there in order to neutralize them. Should I give this letter to Manette? Just put it in the dodo box. How do you open this thing? You don't. There's a lock on it, but Manette is convinced that if she opens it, all the wickedness in there will escape and wreak havoc. In fact, don't say anything to her about that letter. It'll just upset her, and if she falls any further behind, she'll have to cancel her show next month. And if that happens, she may as well cancel her career. Luna says she kind of sounded upset about it being slid under the door. Well, the weird part is the door has a mail slot. Like, there was a mail slot right there, and they put it under the door instead of through the mail slot. That's a little puzzling. Grave says, I'm good. I had an amazing weekend with the parents. We finally got through the Scorsese movie. Oh my gosh, how many sessions did that take? Sapphire says, I didn't think about that until now, and I've played this game so many times. It was honestly my first time noticing, just because, you know, I'm looking for house flipper in spell. And I was like, oh, that's a nice door. I like the blue, the mail slot adds some visual interest. And then as I'm thinking about the mail slot, Hi. the letter came under the door, and it's like, well, wait a minute. Like, at that point, you're just doing it to be threatening. Oh my goodness. Hello, Amber. Thank you for the follow. Oh my goodness gracious me. Rafe says it took two sittings. It was a three hour, 25 minute movie. I see I see that Twitch now says that I have a hundred followers. So congratulations, Amber, you are our one hundredth customer. Oh my goodness. Hello, Marquee Gaming. Hello, Raiders. Welcome, welcome. We just hit a hundred followers this very minute. So you came into the middle of excitement with more excitement. Hello, Raiders. Hello, Chiv. How's everybody doing? How was the art stream? Did you finish Desert Husband? Oh my goodness. I'm a little overwhelmed. That's a lot going on at once. Hype, 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 hype. Yeah, that, that's a lot of excitement for a Monday evening. <laughs> Just says emote bombing with your face. Yes. Right. Let's let's get her talking so I can take a minute to like emotionally process everything that's going on. Has this windmill or moulin always been a fashion design studio? No. In fact, until a year or two ago, this little old lady lived here. When she passed away, this place went on the market and Manette snapped it up. See, Manette has this thing about curves. She claimed working in a quasi-round environment like this would make her more productive. To be fair, I would also snatch up an old windmill if I saw one on the market. There was a house that I saw for sale a few years ago that like it was like a hundred year old silo or something made of brick and they'd like, put floor in so there was a second floor and turned it into like 
a tiny house. And it was one of those where, like, I just kept going back to the listing going, I can't buy that. I couldn't live there. That wouldn't be practical. But it was so cool. It was round. Boomer says, good thing you got rest yesterday. I know, right? Yeah. Um, yesterday, all of our plans got canceled. So, we, you know, um, no backup plan in place. I uh, kind of spent the entire day playing Baldur's Gate 3. Like, when I say the whole day, I mean it. Chip says, I'm only just now officially awake and had coffee a little too late in the day. Oh, dear. At least you're awake. Boomer says your next house should have a turret. Oh, I completely agree. I know Luke won't argue with you either. Turrets are important. And has it? As if. But she has gotten a lot of press out of it. In fact, if there's one thing I've learned from Manette, it's that how a designer behaves is likely to get her just as much attention in the fashion world as what she designs. Luke says a turret and a cannon. There you go. Honestly? Um, you know the, uh, the thing that they have in parks a lot where they have the old cannon with flowers around it? I would do that. I'd be down to a cannon. Chip says best deterrent for solicitors. Yes! Luke says we'll conquer the neighborhood. They'll never see it coming. Boomer says there's a guy who made an entire rotating house. That might be a little too much. I could see if you're like um, an artist and you want natural light for the whole day. Or a plant person. Shiv would probably be down for the rotating house, right? Just slowly rotates through the day so that the sunroom is always in the sun. Brave says maybe Princess should move into an old Scottish castle and live out her silent spy dreams. Ugh. See, the problem is if I was in a castle, I would get nothing done because I would spend all of my time tapping on walls looking for hidden passageways and running through the hallways in a ball gown. And I would just carry a candle on a tall candlestick with me everywhere. Roy says the best deterrent for people trying to sell stuff to you is a flamethrower. That one's on the list, too. Sapphire asks, how much do you want to sell your wasp killing? Enough to face turrets? Hey, Chiller. Welcome, welcome. How you doing? Chiller says, reminds me of the cannon from Mary Poppins. Jeff says, constantly sunbathing? That sounds nice. Right? Luke says a tank in the driveway might also be a good deterrent. Label your doorbell definitely not a trap door. That's a good idea, Chiv. I like that. Why does Manette wear that mask? All I know is that back in March, on the last day of her big fall show, she showed up wearing that mask, and she hasn't taken it off since. Let's see. Mm. And she's never bothered to explain why? Sometimes she refuses to say. Other times she says it's because some mysterious man in black threw acid on her. I think it's because she just likes to get people's tongues wagging. What's with all the red paint that's splattered on the wall in Manette's studio? I came in one morning last month, and there it was. Manette must have had a bad night. You didn't ask her about it? Manette always throws things when she's upset. Remember what happened when you first arrived? Oh yeah, the potted plant. I get your point. That's fair. Luke says we could put fake hinges next to the doormat just to make people think. I love the way your mind works. 
Who is Dieter von Schwesterkrank? He's this awesome fashion photographer. But listen, as it turns out, I have to run an errand in that area, so I'll pick up those fabric photos. Oh, no, that's okay. I'll do it. Finding his studio will help me get more familiar with Paris. In fact, why don't I run your errand, too? No, that's all right. It, uh, it can wait. Getting those prints to jean me is much more important. Hmm. Boomer says, fake hinges are too much work. Use real hinges. There we go. We could probably make a trapdoor. We were in a coffee shop recently that we like that's in an old building and discovered that there is a trapdoor in the hallway leading to the ladies room like it's been painted over but there's a trap door it's the kind that has the like the the loop inset and now we're just wildly curious about what's under the coffee shop why am i delivering photos to somebody in a cafe jean-michel trekinard is the fashion editor for glam glam magazine all he really is is a glorified gossip columnist, so it pays to be nice to him. Which, as you'll find out, ain't easy. His office is the Café Kiki on the Rue des Mauvais Garçons in the Marais. Look for the bald guy at the corner <coughs> table. He'll have a cell phone in one hand and a fork in the other. Well, I'll see you later. Whenever you have questions, just ask. I mean, it sounds like he's living his best life, honestly. Luke shares that particular coffee shop's employees are infamously always in the kitchen, so I tried it. Stuck. Yeah, we were disappointed. Alright, let's do... Roy says, Luke, start digging a moat and order some alligators. Oh, Boomer says, sadly, the Iowa River Power Company restaurant, a repurposed actual power station, recently closed. That is sad. Huh? Come on, the fish lights up. better than gators. I don't know. Gators you could possibly train with marshmallows until you can pet. Bonjour, mademoiselle. Monsieur Marchand, à votre service. Bonjour, monsieur Marchand. American tourist? Mm. Sort of. Is that okay? I like Americans. They are smart. I sell good stuff and they can tell. I know you are a tourist because I saw you looking at the monument over there with the cross of Lorraine. Ah. So, what are you going to buy? Well, what's in here? A movie? Oui, it contains an American short film. I am not sure if it is about the beloved beast of burden in Tibet or about someone who talks a lot, but it has won many awards. And the fact that it is in a nice blue canister makes it well worth 84 euro. That's a lot of money. How about 63 euros? Vendu. What else tickles the fancy? Not how many euros everything is. I really don't want to buy anything right now. By any chance, does uh, Mademoiselle wish to earn some money? 100%. Maybe. How? The tourists, uh, they like to buy hand painted reproductions of famous works of art. But as you can see, it is difficult for me to paint them. But for a young woman such as you, it is easy. You want me to paint the reproductions? 
You see? Mm -hmm. The lines are Coloring already there. Black. You look at the original painting, you put paint on your brush, you paint between the lines. Voila! A painting which Citrus will gabble up. And I pay you 15 euro for each one you complete. Do you wish to start now? Well, sure, if that's okay. But of course. All right. That fire says, I forgot this. Oh my gosh. Really? This is one of my favorite parts. I got it down to a science. When I was playing it the most, I could do this one in particular without having to look at the reference. Monsieur, how's this? Magnifique! You have done excellent work. And for that, I reward you. Do you wish to paint another? Not right now. Maybe later. Very well. Au revoir, mademoiselle. Au revoir. Yeah, the painting is very fun. Bonjour, mademoiselle. If you like the bargains, you have come to the right mm. place. What captures the eyes? Well... See, I can't remember what all Minette wants. So I am having to guess. What's the price of this lava lamp? That lamp is very special. The truck which rises and falls inside it, unlike any I have ever seen. Watching it will entertain you for hours, and I am selling it for only 20 euro. Sapphire says these French accents are something else. Some of them more something than others. Would you take 15 euros instead? It is yours. See anything else you like? It's true. Mm, I Actually, I don't see anything else. Here, the new things oh come God. and old things go all the time. You must come back. I might just do that. Au revoir. Au revoir, mademoiselle. Because I'm, like, desperately trying to remember what the four things are. Bonjour. Lequel préférez-vous? Parlez-vous anglais? If you buy, I speak whatever you like. I am Malika. I sell fine things from around the world. The others here, they sell things which they pry from the muck of their basements. Okay, let's see what you've got. You're selling a wheel from a kitty car? With imagination, that wheel can be put to many uses. Which is why the price is 35 euros. Of course it is. I'll give you 26 euros for it. Voila. What else do you like? Guess I'm just not in a buying mood. When you come back, maybe then I have what you like. I'll remember that. Merci. Au revoir. Is the other one the... Um, the tr like the road. Bonjour, thing? mademoiselle. What captures the eyes this time? Well, let's see. Sapphire says these other people sell junk, but my junk is different. It's shiny. Does this cost very much? Yeah. The traffic cone is one of my favorites. So colorful and so useful. With it, I myself learn to park my car parallel, and I ask only ten euro for it. Would you take 8 euros for it? It is yours. See anything else you like? Actually, I don't okay. see anything else. Come back soon. Perhaps I will have new things. Okay. Au revoir. Okay. Au revoir, mademoiselle. Roy says next time I need a starter for my yard sale, I'll go to Paris, right? Let's see. So, yes. All right, let's see if we can get an envelope from JJ. That is a very shiny tile floor. Wow. Okay. Come in, come in, set your things down and come on over here. Hi, JJ Ling. I shake your hand, but I get flour all over you. Oh, and Heather called and told me about your luggage? No worries. I have plenty of clothes in every size imaginable. Your bedroom's down that hall. The airline lost my luggage once, told me it was gone for good and paid me a hundred dollars. 
then five years later, my suitcase shows up on my doorstep. And a bill for the hundred dollars they'd paid me. Plus interest. She's odd. It showed up five years later. What? You don't believe me? Actually, no. Ooh, you're honest. You're smart. You and I are gonna get along great, Nancy Drew. You were right not to believe me. I made it up. See, to be a good model, you kind of have to be a good actress, too. So sometimes I make things up, you know, just for practice. Just to see if I can get people to believe me. She is so sketchy. Jiller said, I once heard that people in Europe overcharge Americans when selling things as the locals barter with shopkeepers. That makes sense. Sapphire says, that's wall tiles on the floor. Oh, 100%. They have a lot of really, really shiny floors in this game, though. Like, in this series, in general, the floors are very frequently way shiny. Doesn't that make people kind of mad? Some people, yeah. Mm. But I don't do it to be mean. And it's not like I'm hurting anybody. Mm. I'm just being creative. I've got some people convinced that I won the lottery and I'm actually a millionaire. It's kind of fun. You like chocolate chip cookies? I love chocolate chip cookies. So do I. And the nice thing is, I'm about three pounds shy of being the perfect size 12 that I need to be for Minette. I have a very high metabolism. So, I make cookies, I eat cookies, and since you're here, I share cookies. Sapphire says some of the things that are hyper-realistic make no sense. Alpha CC. Just says, this lady just casually a massive liar and happy with it. I know, right? Like, uh, slightly sociopathic? Like, empathy girlfriend. It's very trendy. Why does Manette want you to be a size 12? Contractually, I have to be a size 12. See, Minette is into curves, so she designs clothes for full-figured curvy women. Because I signed on to be a fitting model, I have to maintain the ideal size 12 weight and shape. Fire says, I was about to say, casual sociopath. Oh yeah. Mm. What's a fitting model? A fitting model puts on samples from a designer's latest line, so the designer can create each piece on a real live person instead of a dress form. It's not very exciting. In fact, it's totally boring. Plus, you're always getting stabbed with pins. But it pays the bills. Which, if she's living in this cute little apartment in Paris, I would imagine her bills are sky high. Like, I don't know what a two-bedroom apartment goes for in Paris, but... Does anyone else live here? Nope. It's just me. And you now. Managed to get a short-term lease. As soon as I'm done being Minette's fitting model, I am out of here. Chip says, oh, if only they did this kind of sizing more often. I mean, like, designing clothing to fit an actual woman's body instead of some weird average of measurements? Yeah. Yeah. Can you think of anyone who might be out to get Minette? Well, Dieter, obviously. Dieter von Schwesterkrank? He and Minette went out for about six months, <clears throat> and all of a sudden, last April, Minette dumped him. Just tossed him aside like last month's edition of Vogue. Do you know why she broke it off? No idea. Although I suspect it has something to do with the fact that Dieter lets his pet boa constrictor run loose in that photographic studio of his. There's a snake in his studio. That's what I said. Don't you believe me? <laughs> nice try, JJ. This time I'm telling the truth. Dieter <laughs> really does keep a snake in his studio. Hardly <laughs> anybody knows about it. I think it may be illegal. If you happen <laughs> to be in there, be careful. Boomer says, checked real quick. Paris two-bedroom rentals, not much different than over here. The, well, if they cost the same that they do here, then I really am questioning how much money she's making from Minette. That she can afford the whole thing herself. Heather wants me to pick up an envelope from you. Oh yeah, it's right over there. 
Heather needed a bunch of personal information so they can pay me, but I refused to give it out over the phone. I'm real paranoid about that sort of stuff. Don't ask me why, I just am. Go ahead and take it to her. Okay. Given that we've already established she's at least a little bit of a sociopath, it makes perfect sense to me that she would think people are hunting for her personal information because con artists always think they're being conned because they project themselves onto the people around them. Like, they can't... They can't figure out what you're up to, so they are imagining what they would be doing in your situation, and that is taking advantage of people. So... yeah. I'll let you get back to your cookie dough. See ya! I'm just saying, that's pretty solid characterization there. I love her little plant stand! That's so cute! She has so many plants. She's got a little shelf for plants. She has a bunch of plants on shelves. Plants over here, painting of plants, another plant stand. More paintings of plants. These columns have plant pots on top of them. More plants. More plants. Plant up there. Oh my gosh, the dishes have prints of plants. More plants. Alrighty. Mint shortage. Okay, fresh mint is in short supply in Paris. A black market for mint sprang up almost as soon as supplies started to dwindle. says, I thought you said Prince of Plants for a second. Like Prince of Persia, but in the jungle. Okay. Ooh. Urban Spelunking. An urban explorer shares his phone number and says to be very careful in the catacombs. All right. Uh, I'm sure I'm pronouncing everything wrong in this entire game. But I'm gonna try anyway. Hey. Nice walls. No, no, don't say anything. Let me guess. Oh boy. You lost your passport, so you're looking for the American consulate to get it replaced. Only you wound up here because you asked a Parisian for directions, and you thought you understood what he said. <laughs> Only you did it. Am I right? All right. Have a, have a good evening, Boomer. Thanks for visiting. Okay, so his, this guy, his story sounds like a big assumption, right? That, oh, you're an American who asked a Parisian for directions to the consulate and they led you here instead. Like, that sounds kind of ridiculous, but... Growing up, my parents' phone number was one digit off from our local school system. So every time there was a snow day, my mom would be answering the phone all morning for people who were trying to call the school and were calling her instead. To the point where if an unknown number called, she could answer and be like, were you looking for the school? That's not here. So she would just like... Used to. I don't know if they do snow days anymore, but yeah, anytime there was some kind of, like, if it was a holiday, a teacher training day, whatever, Chip says they didn't listen to the radio or watch the news for closures. 
I don't think they could watch the news for closures. No local station or anything. Uh, like, when I was a kid, rural area, you had to call the school to find out. I think a lot of the people way out there didn't even have internet for a long time. So once they got internet out there and stuff, uh, she got the calls less frequently. But, yeah. Carlyth says, we didn't even when the snow was past the roof. Oh my gosh, what area? Were you in Colorado or something? Buffalo, New York? Wisconsin. Um. So, after much more north. Ooh. Canada, Scandinavia. Uh, my brother, after graduation, started working at the school, so he always knew everything that was going on, and therefore my mom knew everything that was going on. So, like, when she gets calls like that, she'll just answer their questions, because she knows. Chiff says, our local news we picked up on, on a fishbone-looking antenna... And it was from the city that was hours away and across the state line. Similar situation, yes. Well, you got the part about being an American, right? But you're not lost? Ugh, I must be losing my touch. Dieter von Schwesterkrank. Please don't tell me you're a would-be model who thinks her career would take off if only I would photograph her. No, my name's Nancy Drew. Minette sent me here to pick up some fabric photos. Ah, I regret to say I have not printed them up yet, nor will I have time to do so for quite a while. Had I used my digital cameras, there would be no problem, but unfortunately, the essence of those fabrics was better captured by film. So, I'm wondering if... Like, if when it's pronounced poorly or something, his address is similar to the consulate's address, and so he gets lost tourists, like, all the time. Fire says he looks like a psychopath. I don't know why. See, you say that, but also I'm sitting here looking at him thinking, which serial killer does he remind me of? And I can't place it, but if I do, I'll let y'all know. Chip says, we assume all the suspects in Nancy Drew games are crazy in some way. I mean, everyone is hiding something. One of them is hiding being the bad guy, but everyone is hiding something. Sapphire suggests Jeffrey Dahmer. Ah, that might be it. Also, he's got that uh, deep set light eyes thing going on, which I believe is one of the ways that Brad Dorif gets cast as so many... Very, very messed up characters. So, yeah, Dahmer sounds right. Chip says, yeah, it's the eyes and brow line. Mm hmm. You're not really going to make me go back to Manette and tell her that, are you? Hmm. I'd forgotten how unpleasant she can be when things don't go her way. How could you? Do forget? you know how to make prints? Uh, sure. Then all is well. <laughs> there is a binder on the bookshelf that will tell you how to make prints with the paper I use, which is Krollmeister Eskachrom PB paper. The dark room is through the door with the red light by it, and the four negatives from which prints need to be made are next to the enlarger. I'm sure you'll do fine. Okay. Also, is this one with an Easter egg? See, I don't see a snake. I see a fish tank. All right. Sure, all processes are done in complete darkness. Oh man, this oh this puzzle. I'll say this puzzle was a lot easier to solve um when the fishbowl screens were around. Like CRT monitor was great. And so like uh, 
um, when we were kids and my brother and I played this for this puzzle, we put pieces of masking tape on the screen over each of the things we needed to click on, along with uh, like numbers written on them saying how long that thing was supposed to be clicked for. And I can't do that on the fancy screens. Okay. Insert the negative. And then turn off lights. Sapphire says that's what I did last time I played. Ah! Do you think it's still usable? Alright. Insert negative. Turn off lights. In larger, two to nine seconds. Do you have post-its? Yes, just be gentle when placing. Okay, I don't know why it is. Maybe I just, like, I cheaped out, I got the wrong post-its, but they just fall off things immediately. None of my post-its stick. They stick to each other, and that's it. So, we'll see how it goes, and if we have to grab the post-its, we will. Alright, enlarger. Two to nine seconds. Enlarger, negatives, developer, stop map, fixer. May I take this binder into the dark room with me? Leave it in here, please. If you take it in there, you might spill something on it. Okay. Red one. Seven. To twelve. That's not helpful. Seriously. And then the white one, less than five seconds. And the blue one, eight to fifteen. And then you can turn on lights. Okay. All right. What's this? That's just a toy I made when I was a boy. Go ahead and play with it if you want. I still do. Made it? Looks like something my brother would make. Okay, got photo studio stuff. Cute fireplace. Okay. He's a fashion photographer and on his walls and stuff he has a ton of photography of everything except fashion. Just make sure you don't knock over anything in there. Some of those chemicals are extremely volatile. Alright, I'm trying to remember how you get the... Easter egg. Help yourself. <laughs> do you have to do it in complete darkness? his water bill up so high. That'll teach him. He'll never want to let people in ever again. Oh, 
that's a pretty Easter egg. All right, that was worth it. Oh, I love that. Can I do my nails like that? Whoa! Look oh, at boy. all those bottles of chemicals. One false move and boom. Okay. All right, larger is there. There. Light switches there. All right. Red. White. Blue. Ah, uh, we got an Easter egg. Here, hang on. It looks like this. It pretty. We got it by flushing the toilet a whole bunch of times. These must be the negatives. All right. Ready? Yep. They start giving you literal Easter eggs. It's awesome. All right. Let's see how many tries this takes. Oh my gosh, it's pitch black in here. With all those chemicals around, I'm going to have to be real careful. No kidding, Nancy. Two, one thousand, three, one thousand, four, one thousand. Two, one thousand, three, one thousand, four, one thousand, five, one thousand, six, one thousand, seven, one thousand, eight, one thousand, nine, one thousand, one, one thousand, two, one thousand, three, one thousand, one, one thousand, two, one thousand, three, one thousand, four, one thousand, five, one thousand, six, one thousand, seven, one thousand, eight, one thousand, nine, one thousand. There. All done. One down, three to go. It's a picture of fabric, all right. Oh, gosh. Hey, Mrs. First. Welcome, welcome. How are you today? Okay. Yeah, if we click on anything wrong, we'll kind of blow up the room, I think. Um, it's not good. It's not good. So, <laughs> um... All right. This first says, doing well. Glad I got here for a bit before you're done. I'm glad you made it too. And I'm glad you're doing well. I'm, I'm feeling a lot better this week than last week. I, all of our plans yesterday got canceled. So, um, I kind of spent the entire day playing Baldur's Gate 3 like the entire day it was lovely very restorative <laughs> all right one one thousand two one thousand three one thousand four one thousand this one I broke my timer, so you'll have to come to your bed. You know, nine, eight, seven, six, five, one thousand, seven, one thousand, eight, one thousand, nine, one thousand. Yeah, shut up! Don't say numbers, Dieter. <sighs> like, yeah, you know, I'll I'll tell you when I finish this part. One, one thousand, two, one thousand, three, one thousand. Oh dear! Oh, dad, gum it. Whoops. Yep, we blew it up. Okay. Yeah, they keep trying to distract me. Alright. I let my hand shake. I missed track of where I was putting it. Um, so I had this problem recently where I was listening to Beacon's Aura, Dungeons & Dragons podcast, while crocheting. And I was crocheting Amigurumi. So... Following a pattern, super detailed, it's, you know, like three stitches of this kind and then one of this kind and then three of this kind and like on and on we go. So I'm crocheting these and they're playing D&D &D, and they keep saying numbers. You know, they're, oh, I rolled the 17 and that's a plus three, so dirty 20, but oh man, it's <laughs> the DC is 23 and I'm like, four, <laughs> five. 
it's like, I could turn it off. There were a couple times where I had to pause so I could count and then go back to it. But it was, oh my gosh, it was, why am I doing this to myself? They turned out fine. They all turned out fine. But wow. <laughs> like, I did it to my own self, but like, I hadn't considered how many numbers they would be saying. <laughs> Chip says you did amazing and under pressure. Thank you. Like, why did I do that? <laughs> I could have listened to an audiobook. But no, I was making them while listening to D&D. &D. Like, I think... I think I was working on Raya while I was listening to the final battle. That was intense. I'm really glad she turned out the same size as the others and not like way smaller for me holding the everything much, much tighter. Yeah, like he's doing the same thing. Shut up, Dieter. Okay, gotta get my hand at just the right angle. Alright, let's try this. One, one thousand, two, one thousand, three, one thousand, four, one thousand. One, one thousand, two, one thousand, three, one thousand, four, one thousand, five, one thousand, six, one thousand, seven, one thousand, eight, one thousand. One, one thousand, two, one thousand, three, one thousand. One, one thousand, two, one thousand, three, one thousand, four, one thousand, five, one thousand, six, one thousand, seven, one thousand, eight, one thousand, nine, one thousand, ten, one thousand. There, all done. Finish another one. Looks like fabric to me. Oh gosh. Chip says, seriously, I don't blame you for the tension. Oh yeah. So, said, I was very happy that they turned out like reasonably similar. And there wasn't a huge difference between scenes where they're role playing versus scenes where they're fighting and all that. Yeah. I, I used to have some issues when I would make anime characters while watching anime. So, like, I've, I've grown as an artist. It's all good. We love improvement. Okay. Alright. There, there, and there. One, one thousand, two, one thousand, three, one thousand, four, one thousand. One, one thousand, two, one thousand, three, one thousand, four, one thousand, five, one thousand, six, one thousand, seven, one thousand, eight, one thousand. One, one thousand, two, one thousand, three, one thousand. One, one thousand, two, one thousand, three, one thousand, four, one thousand, five, one thousand, six, one thousand, seven, one thousand, eight, one thousand, nine, one thousand, ten, one thousand. There. All done. I'm getting there. Right, one beautiful. more. Not very interesting, but beautiful. I like that one. That's pretty. Chip says, how about a stress blanket? Each row is messed up as you go on. Instead of a temperature blanket, weather blanket, etc. Oh, gosh. That's all of my blankets, though. Like, I have a few where one row is just like... And it's like, oh yeah, that was that day. Alright, last one. Let's see if we can do it without blowing up again. One, one thousand, two, one thousand, three, one thousand, four, one thousand. One, one thousand, two, one thousand, three, one thousand, four, one thousand, five, one thousand, six, one thousand, seven, one thousand, eight, one thousand. One, one thousand, two, one thousand, three, one thousand. 
1000, 2, 1000, 3, 1000, 4, 1000, 5, 1000, 6, 1000, 7, 1000, 8, 1000, 9, 1000, 10, 1000. There, all done. Ish. There, I'll just put them in an envelope and I'll be all set. Okay. Ah, you made the prints. Now you get to have the pleasure of delivering them to Monsieur Treckle now. It sounds like you don't like him. He's a conceited nixnuts who thinks far too highly of himself and far too little of everyone else to do his job fairly. I'm looking that word up after stream. And I have seen people make mood blankets. I can never do those row a day blankets, though. Um. Heather didn't seem to like him very much either. I refuse to bow and scrape when I'm in his presence, and he resents me for it. He's not used to that. You see. Most people are so afraid he'll write something bad about them that, as far as they're concerned, whatever Joan me wants, Joan me gets. No questions asked. Hmm. Why does Jean me need those prints? Heather said that he wants to use them to illustrate an upcoming story about modern fabrics. She just says maybe a granny square bay instead of rose. I just really can't do the per day projects because there will always be at least one day where I can't and it breaks my streak and I just can't get back to it. Um, like I really prefer intensive projects where the challenge is how much you can do in a short time on a tight deadline as opposed to how long you can do something consistently because um, <clears throat> I don't do consistent well. What's your opinion of Minette's assistant, Heather McKay? Heather's a bright girl. Her crush on me is unfortunate, but I can handle it. <laughs> she has a crush on you? It's obvious to me that she does. Dealing with models the way I do day in and day out, I've gotten pretty good at knowing what women are thinking and feeling. Chip says I don't do either very well, honestly. I get that. I have to be in the right mood for um, deadline challenges. Sometimes I just get mad at the deadline. Sometimes I get inspired by it. So I have to be I have to be mindful of stuff before I set myself a challenge. Does Heather know that you know? I've said nothing to her because although there is no chance that I will ever reciprocate her feelings, oh. I see no point in hurting her. Let her have her crush. Eventually she will set her heart on someone else and I will be forgotten. Mm. Is it true that you keep a pet boa constrictor in here? Don't be ridiculous. I would never keep an exotic pet like that in here. Although I may have lost an exotic pet like that in here once. You mean, there is a snake in here somewhere? I'm sure it's found its way out by now. They get pretty active when they're hungry, you know, and I haven't seen it for months. But, uh, just in case, watch where you step. Ugh. Never coming back here. Chip says, I wish I could work under the time limit. I'll work two or three days and then I'll take a week or even more off. Oof. Is that it? It really depends on what all's going on and yeah, mood and available resources and all of it. Hey, Lociation! Welcome, welcome! It's good to see you. How well do you know JJ Ling? As well as I care to. It's the way she's always pulling out that annoying word game and begging people to play. And did you know that she won a lottery back in the States? That's right, she's actually filthy rich. What kind of person models when she's filthy rich? 
There's something not quite right about that girl. I hear that you used to date Minette. That is correct. But you're not dating her now? No. Because... You would have to ask her. <laughs> she broke up with me by leaving a message on my cell phone, and she hasn't said a word to me since. It was an unforgivable outrage. I don't claim to be a paragon <coughs> of virtue, but even I didn't deserve that. Ouch. Jeff says, drawing takes me forever, and then losing the momentum kills me every time. I've been struggling with writing, specifically. Like, I've done, like, huge writing challenges and stuff before, and, like, done well, and lately it's like every word is pulling teeth. You've had no contact at all with Manette since she broke it off? None. All my dealings with her now are strictly professional, with Heather handling any and all communication between us. Carlyle says I helped write a program that might help. What kind of program? Oh, I, I just use um, Scrivener and open office the the problem's not the program the, the problem is like me having issues with um feeling like i'm too cringe to live so i need to figure out how to embrace the cringe and actually enjoy the things that make me happy instead of being embarrassed for them. Have you tried communicating with her anonymously? Are you accusing me of something? No, I'm just curious. Curiosity is not necessarily curious. a good thing for a line. I try to remember that if I were you. Carlyle says the cringe takes practice. It really does. I better go. Adios. Jeff says intentionally write cringe on the side. That way you have a perspective of it not being as bad as you thought it was. I'm trying. I am legitimately trying. Speaking of trying, though, can I just say that it really bugs me that he's supposed to be a fashion photographer and none of his photos are fashion photos. Like, he has so many photos. He has nature photos. He has travel photos. He has, like, stock photos. Technology. He does not have any fashion photos. Mm. Uh oh Dad made me promise not to go anywhere by myself <laughs> after fashion. This will have to wait until tomorrow. So I used to write cringe on the side and like really loved it. And lately, lately I just have this like horrible sense of being exposed and like can't bring myself to write for me. So I'm working on that. And Hoping it gets better soon. Like, like part of the issue here, I think. Just I like, you know, I like fantasy romance and paranormal mystery with romance elements and all of this like very sweet stuff. I love soft magic systems. Like, I like it when the magic happens because it's magical. You know, true love broke the spell. Whatever. It's fine. And my audience for this would be, look, let's face it, most likely millennial women who like romance and mushy emotions and um, soft magic. But when I'm going to write, I have the emotional reaction of my audience being tech bros. Ad break, always. Always in the middle of a monologue. 
You sly dog, you got me monologuing. And then threw off my groove. Oh hey, that's the mosaic table. I have that. Yeah. That's finished. All the that's from finished. KJ. Been there, Bowls done from that. Dieter. Check. Oh, that's some finished. Of you are so out of order. Okay. We. Wow. Okay, tell me you're having a midlife crisis without telling me you're having a midlife crisis. I'm sorry to bother you, but are you Jean-Michel Traquenard? Not Traquenard. It is Jean-Michel Traquenard. Jean-Michel Traquenard. Traquenard! 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 Enough! What can I do for you, mademoiselle? Uh... Drew. Nancy Drew. I've just started working for Manette, as an assistant. Oh? What uh, happened to Ezer? Ezer? At, at that point, he's just trying. Like, he's doing that on purpose so he can seem exotic. Like, he's having all of the midlife crises at once. Also, is that a purse? That doesn't look like a briefcase. He carries a man purse. Chip says the stereotype of French being mean when you can't speak French. Ooh. Ezer? Ezer. Ezer Mickey. Ezer Mickey. Hmm? Oh, Heather McKay. No, Heather still works for Manette. I'm kind of working for both of them. Our Lady of the Mask has fired three assistants in the past five months. <laughs> I hope you are not next. In fact, that Ezer has managed to avoid the axe for this long is uh, truly remarkable. Here, I'm supposed to give these photos to you. They came straight from Dieter von Schwesterkrank's darkroom. I printed them up myself. You are quite doué as a photo developer. Bravo for you, Nancy Drew. Merci. I was afraid Ezer had forgotten. So, you had the pleasure of meeting Herr von Schwesterkrank, eh? It says, I don't think that's a man purse, I think that's just a purse purse. He's European, you know. He seemed very nice. Dieter is a very uh, enterprising young man, which in most cases is good, but when arrogance enters the picture, pfft. So, do you, uh, like Ezer, hope to leave your mark on the world of couture? I have no desire to design wild and crazy dresses, if that's what you mean. Then you are an intelligent young lady, Nancy. In the world of couture, a single creation worn by someone famous to a high-profile event, such a dress can be worth a fortune in publicity, which makes it a desperately competitive world. A dog-eat-dog -dog world. A world where bad things can and do happen to good people. You must order something. I insist. Le carte, s'il vous plaît. You might get assassinated. Oh, you I should eat. Not hungry. Mademoiselle. Thank you. I mean, merci. Order anything you want. Everything here is mm. superb. And Henri, he is the best waiter in all of France. Well, in that case... Mm. Um... Yeah, just my... My audience would likely be, like sweet ladies who like love and like very uh, I want to say very sweet relationships but with lots of mushy emotional scenes and soft magic systems and when I go to write I keep having the emotional reaction like my audience is supposed to be tech bros who are into hard sci-fi and are just going to, like, destroy all of it. Like, it's not going to be up to their standards. It's like, it's not supposed to be their standards. It's a different standard, not a higher standard. Relax. Chip says, Hallmark fantasy. 
not quite not quite hallmark but probably similar spice level i don't know carly says i like both honestly it's good to have range and sometimes i like something that's a little a little more something or another but look my favorite book of all time is Hexwood by Diana Wynne Jones. House Moving Castle also ranks very high. Like, yeah, most of my favorite books are middle grade. I have not read Sarah J. Moss. Some of the things that I've heard about her books have scared me. Let's do. All right. Monsieur is that, um, it's like open face sandwich, right? The Glenly, that's frogs. That one's frog legs. Clem de glass would be ice cream. Don't know cassoulet or canoe. Steak haché et pompier. I think that is hamburger and fries. Here, I screenshot. Um, okay, I would like to order all of these over the course of the game, but this is the only one he pays for. So, let's do the most expensive one, even though that's frog legs and I would rather die. May I please have a quiz de grenouille? Oui, mademoiselle. <laughs> Merci, Henri. Ajoutez-le à mon édition, s'il vous plaît. Certainement. Uh oh, this looks like. Frog legs, a brave but wise choice. They are magnifique. If you say so. Mm. Guess she liked it. Mm. That was wonderful. Excusez-moi, mademoiselle. <laughs> so, what else do you wish from me? Okay. Oh no, Chip says, yeah, my friends are are reading it and she tells me about scenes without warning y you gotta give people warning uh a couple of my friends and i are all currently reading the ice planet barbarians books and we've discussed that we need to have a meeting of the barbarians book club so that we can like really pick it apart without traumatizing anyone else Hmm. Chip says mostly I hear about how much she hates Tamlin. Okay, and that's honestly one of the reasons that I'm like off put from the books because I know that the name Tamlin comes from the Ballad of Tamlin. But I also know that way more people are familiar with Sarah J. Moss than are familiar with the Ballad of Tamlin. So they're always going to associate that name with her character, who, as far as I can tell, is nothing like the character in the ballad. And I absolutely adore the ballad of Tamlin, so it upsets me so very much. Chip says it sounds a lot like Stockholm Syndrome. Oh no. No, no, no. No, the Ballad of Tam Lin is this absolutely beautiful Scottish border song from, I think, the 1100s about a young woman who falls in love with one of the Fairy Queen's knights and, like, fights the Fairy Queen to free him so that she can marry him. And it's, it's lovely. Yeah, well, that's what I'm saying, is that the ballad is lovely. It's this beautiful, like... It's a beautiful, female-driven, like, love epic. Like, I love it. It's great. And then there's the Sarah J. Moss character. And I just feel like everyone who hears Tamlin is going to think of that character and that relationship situation. And it's like, ah, but, mm. Yeah, there's a version by... Anais Mitchell and Jefferson Hamer that is beautiful 
and it focuses more on the relationship because it's a very long song and their version focuses more on the relationship and then there's a version by I I think is Pilakit. I don't know how to pronounce it, but their version focuses more on kind of the lore and the backstory. And they're both lovely in very different ways. There's a lot of different versions because it's such an old story, but like it's it's a beautiful story at the core. Do you have any idea why Minette wears that mask? I believe she is the victim of botched plastic surgery. Do you have proof? No, but I tell you this, Nancy. Some women with noses that would put birds of prey to shame are perfectly content with their appearance, while others with acceptable features are convinced they are more hideous than Frankenstein. Self-image. It can make people do strange things. The station asks the ballads are on YouTube, right? Yes, they are. If you had to name Minette's worst enemy, who would that be? Ugo Batelli, without a doubt. Not only do he and Minette have similar design styles, so that they are constantly competing for the same coup de clients, but both of them are unthinking, socially inept egoists. It is a rare week that goes by without one of them insulting the other. Sounds like one of my ex co workers. Unthinking, socially inept egoist. Has it ever gone beyond words? Not to my knowledge. You ask very curious questions, Mademoiselle Drew. They make me think you know more than you are saying. And as a member of the press, I'm not sure that I like that. Mm -hmm. How can I contact this Hugo Butterly person? His phone number is right here in my digital assistant. Of course, it's extremely unlikely that you will be able to talk to him in person. Even I occasionally have trouble penetrating the wall of psycho fans that surrounds him. So, what else do you wish from me? And I can share links in the Discord to the ballads um, after the stream, I remember. It's... <laughs> yeah, it's a lovely story. I went through a phase where I was extremely obsessed with it. And in the height of my obsession is when the first of those books came out and I was just like, what do you mean he's not lovely? Do you have a real office somewhere? When I'm writing my column, I go to my office at Glam Glam. When I'm researching my column, I come here. I have my telephone, which can do everything save things in Marseillaise, good food, and a chair for whomever stops by. Fair. I'm staying with JJ Ling, the model. Do you know her? But of course, I know everyone who is anyone when it comes to fashion. And Gigi, she is a breath of fresh air. But what about JJ Ling? You mean Gigi Ling? Oh, oh. No, I mean JJ. Gigi. JJ. Pfft. En français, you pronounce G like J and J like G. She may very well be JJ in America. But in France, she is Gigi. Has she done modeling for any other designers in Paris? She did a lot of work earlier this mm -hmm. year for Hugo Butterly, which, uh, I do not doubt, is why Minette was so eager to use her. Unfortunately for Gigi, I assume she told you how she was tricked into a current contract with Minette. No, she didn't. Minette tricked her? If you do not know, you will have to ask Gigi. Just because I know everything that happens in the world of haute couture does not mean that I repeat everything. I'd better get going. D'accord. Alrighty. Let's see if we have the stuff that Minette wanted. Her new stuff is just like the old stuff, but different. I can't remember. It's been like two years since I played this game. Bonjour, Minette's House of Design. Bonjour, est-ce que c'est Heather? Uh, would you like to speak with Heather? All I want is for someone there to tell me how the ensemble I'm paying Minette to design for me is coming along. Which is almost upon us, you know. I'm getting a tad antsy. I understand. And your name is? Prudence Rutherford. 
Prudence Rutherford. Oh, shoot. I know you. I talked to you when I was working at the Beach Hill Museum in Washington, D.C. I'm Nancy Drew, remember? You sent me a copy of your fire ruby necklace. You know, the one that had been stolen. Oh, good heavens, yes, of course, Nancy Drew. Why, as I understand it, it was largely because of your investigatory prowess that my real necklace was recovered soon thereafter. Sounds like Miss Piggy. What is a nascent detective like you doing answering the telephone for Minette? Get down from there. Excuse me, dear. Nancy, tell her the designs are done and will be shipped to her by the end of the week. Then go to the work table and finish them. You want me to finish them? The instructions are all right there. Piece of cake. Why my husband insists on sitting here in my study in his soggy tennis togs when he has the run of the whole villa is beyond me. Oh dear, thanks to that scallywag, I've quite forgotten what we were talking about. Oh good, I'm glad we're all agreed that she sounds like Miss Piggy. I forget too, but the important thing is, I'm going to ship you some designs very shortly. Oh, goody goody gumdrops! You should have them by the end of the week. Okay. Well, I think we were able to. Are the designs that. I'm supposed to finish oh, for Prudence Rutherford under puzzle. here? You got it. Alright, this is another one of those mini games that I would like to just play, but whatever. Alright, Sunny. I've selected the clothing and accessories for Prudence Rutherford, but forgot about her rules for each season's outfits. Please read through them and assemble the correct outfit. Start with summer and then move on to cruise and then fall season. The outfit should include something for the head, face, bottom, top, feet, and an accessory to hold. Also, Prudence firmly believes that patterns or prints not be considered as colors for her rules. When you've correctly assembled an outfit, Heather will tell you right away. If she ignores you, you didn't make it right. Okay. Ah, uh, Prado. Alright. wanted to describe some of the more interesting items I designed for your personal collection. I realize that you have very strict rules on your styles, but also want to give you a wide assortment of clothing and accessories which I feel will complement your personality. Oh boy. Alright, well there's a pineapple purse. Bow leather pants. And a recommendation that she primarily wear primary colors, red, blue, and green. Green galoshes, a top hat, boots covered in authentic Himalayan yak hair. She got them boots with the fur. Tube top, uh -huh. cowboy boots, tube top and cowboy boots with a top hat. Okay. Yellow knee high socks with sandals. Slippers covered in fur from Minette's pant pet Angora, who sheds like crazy. Hat with a feather. Boa. Floral skirt. Plastic purse. Elf shoes. Flared pants. First thing I need to do is flip up this plastic sheet. Okay. Oh my. Oh dear. Oh, it's worse than The Sims 4 with no CC or expansions. Okay. Summer is my least favorite season. Dig that. But one must look smashing at all times. In these dog days, I can be sporty, tranquil, domestic, capricious, and professional. So please consider the following for my outfit design. I need chromatic consistency. Three pieces of clothing must be the same color. No purses. Nothing white, blonde, or yellow. Give me color and radiance. I want my feet to be furry. In summer? Oh. I've maintained my youthful looks all of these years and need at least some sort of sun protection on my body. No patterns and no leather. No rain gear. Green for legs and head. 
Okay. Green on legs. Green on head. Furry feet. But not white, so those are going to be pink. Oh dear. Um, nothing white, blonde, or yellow. Hey, chiller. Welcome, welcome. How are you doing? Right, nothing white. And no purses. Well, what other accessories are there? Can't do rain gear. And three things need to be the same color. But stream is going well. We've had a lot of excitement this evening. Uh, got raided by Marquee Gaming and also hit 100 followers. Oh, good grief. What accessories are there? No rain gear. Nothing yellow. No purses. What else is there to hold? There we go. Furry boa. Excellent. Okay, we're sending a little old lady out in that. That's what Twitch is telling me. Sapphire brought a whole bunch of people into... Like, I don't know. Uh, boost me? I'm trying to think what the right word here is. My cruise wear must speak to my aura and challenge the boring and pretentious mindsets one often encounters in these arbitrary but necessary meetings of my peers. Um, cruises? Cruises are arbitrary but necessary? Okay. Yeah, I'm I'm excited but a little overwhelmed. So we need to figure out uh what kind of hundred follower um like celebratory stream we're gonna do. No skirts. Show as much skin as possible. Oh, that's lovely. No jeans. There's no jeans and no skirts. How are you gonna show skin? No clothing or accessories from the summer outfit. Head and face must be consistently themed. Oh no, I know what, know what that means. Oh no. Hey, no primary colors are yellow. One item that's tropical and nothing black. Oh boy. Alright, consistent theming. For her cruise. Everybody says a 24-hour stream of Planet Crafter. I definitely cannot do a 24-hour stream. Like, that's not something that can happen. I, I can try to do a long stream, but 24 hours ain't happening. Um, primary colors are yellow. Okay. Is that allowed? Oh, dear. Oh dear. Everything about this is awful. Good job. No, it's not. Troy says I've seen people in Walmart dress like that. Oh gosh, I know. Okay. I will say, I love the background painting on this one. That's really cute. I should paint like that. It's cute. For my fall ensemble, I want something dashing but a bit reserved. So, no bunny mask? Something funky, but not upstaging. To it, please consider, and do not deviate from my wishes. If my outfit contains something black, it must also contain something with white. The clothing I wear as a top cannot be a single color. No red for fall, there's plenty of beautiful red in the trees. A boa would be completely inappropriate. While it can be rainy in Kansas, I insist that I only have one piece of rain gear. 
This is first says, too bad the clothes are not as cute as the background. Yep. Nothing sporty, no dark sunglasses, and nothing with braids, no clothing or accessories that would make me think of animals or plants. Black or white is okay, but should not appear above the neckline, and it is chilly in Topeka, so please no short sleeves or short pants. Okay. Um. Oh boy. I hope it doesn't let us keep that. Mm. Nothing sporty. Oh dear. With no sunglasses, I think that's what we've got. At least no more bunny stuff, yeah. Oh boy. Um. That is a purse. The pineapple is a purse. Hmm. No, she said no red. So I guess that's the rain gear. Um, but let's do these, or is that still dark glasses? Um, okay, well, at least it didn't accept that. Um, this one's a little hard. Yeah, we're probably gonna have to wrap it up if this puzzle's hard for me. Alright. Contains something black, must also contain something white. Well, that's that. All oh three boy. outfits are ready for you to send to Prudence. <laughs> Looks good to me. Are you sure, Heather? Are you really, really sure? Looks good to you. If you need to talk to Minette, good luck. She's playing that ridiculous online game she's obsessed with and refuses to do anything else until she gets the highest score. It is so aggravating. Okay, I think we'll figure that out next week. All right, because like, if, if that puzzle is breaking my brain, then it's probably time. Cannot eat the Cocoa Crinkle Bars. That's disappointing. All right. So we will call it here. I am hoping to be back tomorrow. 3 o'clock Eastern Time, playing House Flipper. I'm in a House Flipper mood, so I'm pretty excited for it. Thank you all so much for watching, and thank you for following everyone. Not just the new people, everybody. Thank you all for following. I really appreciate it. I'm, I'm honored. Oh. Thank you all so much for watching. I hope you have... Wait a minute. Oh my gosh, I got so flustered. Like, what's my sign off again? Yep. Should be back tomorrow, 3 o'clock Eastern. Until then, thank you all so much for watching, and I hope you have a wonderful rest of your evening. Bye, everybody.